Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick and in this video I'm going to be comparing the Adidas Boston 12 and the Sockney Endorphin Speed 3. So the Speed 3 and Boston 12 are both trainers that fit into the super category of trainers in that they've got some of the tech from Adidas and Sockney's top carbon racing shoes but are designed to be able to handle a bit more of your daily training as well as being able to do some of the speedy stuff you might be planning as well. The Boston 12 is a newer shoe and the cheaper shoe. It's £140 in the UK, it's $160 in the US. The Sockney Endorphin Speed 3 is £165 and $170. Speed 3 is a tad lighter, it's 240 grams or 8.5 ounces in a UK 9, whereas the Boston 12 is 259 grams or 9.1 ounces. The Speed 3 has an 8mm drop with a stack height of 36mm at the heel and 28 at the forefoot, whereas the Boston 12 has a 7mm drop, stack height of 38mm at the heel. 31 millimeters at the forefoot. On design, you've got a mesh upper on the Speed 3 with a little bit of padding around the heel there. The foam in the midsole is Sockney's Power Run PB foam. That's a PBA based foam. And then you've got a nylon plate running through the middle of it with winglets on the side there to create a little bit of extra stability. Nylon rather than carbon to be a little bit more comfortable and flexible for training runs. You've also got the Speed Roll rocker on the shoe, which has been a very important part of a lot of Sockney's recent releases. And then you've got reasonable rubber coverage on the outside. It's a very thin layer of rubber though. Really the aim here is to keep the weight down while providing grip across the heel and forefoot. A little bit of exposed foam there, but nothing too bad in terms of durability. The Adidas has a very lightweight mesh upper with really minimal padding around the heel and tongue in particular. It's a very lightweight racy upper but you have got a little bit of a plastic overlay on the toes there to add a bit of structure at the front of the shoe. Midsole is a dual density setup. The top layer is Adidas's Light Strike Pro. That's their best phone, their bounciest phone, the stuff used on the Adidas Pro 3 and Primex Strung. And underneath you've got a layer of Light Strike EVA. This is Light Strike 2.0, which is a lot softer and lighter than the Light Strike foam used in older Adidas shoes, but it's still a little bit firmer than the Light Strike Pro on top to give you that dual density effect and be a bit more stable than shoes that just use Light Strike Pro. In the middle, we've got Adidas's Energy Rods 2.0 system. These are glass fiber infused rods. As you can see, they run quite far back in the shoe and follow the lines of your metal tarsals under the forefoot to act in a similar way to a nylon or carbon plate to create a more efficient ride and add more spring to your toe off. And then on the outsole, you've got continental rubber outsole, good coverage on the forefoot and heel. It's a reasonably thick layer of rubber there. And obviously continental rubber is well known for providing excellent grip and durability. So on length, both of these shoes fit me well in my normal size. They are both UK 9s, although with Sockney that equates to a US 10, and in the Adidas it's a US 9.5, even though they do have pretty similar lengths there. There are some concerns with fit though outside of the length. Like I said, length is fine. I'd stick to your normal running shoe size, but the Adidas, the concerns I have with it, there's a little bit of a problem with the heel I have with this design that Adidas uses on a lot of its Adizero shoes. Heel locking the shoe seems to have sorted it for the Boston. It's a very racy upper in general. You get a little bit of pressure from the laces on the top of your foot because of the tongue. You can loosen them in certain ways and it's not been a huge problem, but yeah, the upper is quite stripped back, quite minimal. Um, I'd say it's a slightly less wide shoe than the Speed 3 as well. That's actually been a problem for me with the Speed 3. They widened the uh, design of it a little bit with the third version of the shoe. I have a very narrow foot, so I really had to cinch the laces tight to try and get a good reliable hold on the shoe. And I do have a bit of a heel rub issue with the Speed 3 as well, which again, has been more or less solved by heel locking the shoe, but it's something to look out for if you have a narrow foot. So overall on fit, those with narrow feet will probably be better suited to the Boston and those with wide feet will probably get a better fit from the Endorphin Speed 3. But then when it comes to the length of the shoes, I would stick with your normal size for each of these brands. So I'll start by saying these are both outstanding shoes, I think, really versatile shoes that can handle a nice wide variety of training while being impressive at the top end side of things, like really being good for fast stuff while having enough comfort for easy runs. The ride is a little different on the two of them. The endorphin speed is more rockered and smooth. And there's less snap to it. The speed more comes from the very efficient rolling motion you get from the speed roll rocker combined with the plate and foam in the midsole. Whereas the Boston has a snappier ride to it, certainly. You get a little bit more of a kick onto the rods and the uh, Light Strike Pro section on the front of the shoe when you're running fast, and then a nice poppy toe off from it as opposed to the smoother feel of the Endorphin Speed 3. When you do go at easier paces though, I will say the Boston does feel like a pretty smooth shoe. The two foams blend together quite nicely. It's not a really aggressive snap through when you are running easy. Almost the ride profile changes a little bit, which I like because I do prefer a smoother ride at those easy paces. You get a little bit less forfeit fatigue from snapping through if you're a heel striker like myself. And the foams blend really nicely to create a pretty smooth ride. 
And then when you do take it up a notch, you do get that snappier feeling from the Boston. Dolphin Speed 3 feels more similar at all paces, I'd say. It really is very smooth, relaxed. You can get into a rhythm with it very easily, whether you're going you know, an all-out easy recovery run or going down the track to do some fast reps, you still get that nice smooth ride. Overall, I'd say the Speed has a more relaxed feel. It's a more welcoming feel in a way, more approachable. The Upper helps a lot with that because it is just a little bit more comfortable than the Upper on the Boston uh, 12 for me. You've got more padding on the tongue, more padding at the heel, which generally it feels feels like a, a more relaxed training shoe upper than the very racy feel of the Boston 12. It is easier to get along with uh, on those easy runs as a result for me, but it's still a very quick shoe. I don't want to downplay how fast the speed is. I think it's strength really when it comes to fast workouts is those longer, harder sessions. It's really good at helping you maintain a fast pace over long periods, whether that's a race pace workout or just long tempo runs. That smooth ride with the foams really helps you just run efficiently and just keep ticking over while it's costing you a little bit less effort. Still has the pace though for all out reps. I've used the Endorphin Speed line for all kinds of reps down the track, including the three. But I do think the Boston has a more direct feel when you go and run something like 400s or something like that. It's got that snappier ride. You feel maybe a little bit more ground contact, more grounded, and it's easy almost to kick up a gear as opposed to the slightly smoother feel of the Endorphin Speed 3, which means just getting into a rhythm with it more than just really accelerating hard, which I think is a tad easier to do in the Boston. The Boston's also good for sustaining pace over longer periods, um, but I think I do prefer the feel of the speed for those kind of runs. So I often do something like maybe an hour steady, pushing towards tempo pace, and it just feels very controlled in the Speed 3. Boston, you probably get a little bit more feel for the pace you're running in and you feel a bit more grounded, but I'd say maybe it takes a little bit more out of me over those longer runs uh, compared to the Speed 3. I'd say on the uppers, I do think the Speed 3 edges it. I've never had huge problems with the Boston yet, but I just don't really love the upper. I find it a little bit less comfortable than the one on the Speed 3. But on the outsoles, I would say the Boston edges it. This Continental rubber outsole is fantastic for grip uh, and durability. It's a well-known feature of Adidas's shoes for a long time and it's always been very good for me. Speed 3 can be a little bit slippery on a green Greasy surfaces, greasy tracks, greasy pavements. It's not a terrible outsole. I still think it grips well enough to do fast running in wet conditions, but I think the Boston just has the slightly better outsole. So this is a really tight one for me. These are both excellent shoes that can do a wide variety of your training runs and be really enjoyable for a wide variety of your training runs. Uh, the price is fairly similar. Obviously the Boston is that little bit cheaper, but I think the price is fair for both shoes. They do do an awful lot for that price. And I say there's no bad pick here. Whichever one you go for, you are going to get a very good all-rounder training shoe. The rides are different. If you're more into a rocket ride, the Speed 3 has that compared to the snappier feel of the Boston. But again, it's not as clear-cut as that. So at slower paces, I do think the Boston feels pretty smooth itself. It's very cushy uh, at those easy paces, I found. Speed 3 has that smoother ride, though, and that continues into the faster running where it does shine in particular on longer sessions, I think, where you can just roll through them. Or if you're looking at using one of these as a racing shoe for something like a marathon, that's where I think the Speed 3 would have the edge because of that smoother, more comfortable ride. Overall, the Speed just edges it for me. I prefer the rocket ride on the shoe. That's what I tend to go for. I like the fact it's got that more relaxed upper and more relaxed feel for easy runs if you're looking at using it as an, as an all-rounder shoe. And then when it comes to the fast stuff, it can do those short, sharp reps, which I do a little bit of, but what I more do is probably longer reps because I'm usually in marathon training, things like 2K reps or hard 20 minutes, hard 45 minutes, that kind of thing. I think the Speed 3 does those a little bit better for me than the Boston 12, which is, I think, a slightly more impressive shoe when it comes to those short, sharp reps. But if I'm doing those occasionally, I'd probably use a lighter shoe or a carbon racer and have the Speed 3 to handle the bulk of the other training, which I think it does a little bit better than the Boston 12 for me. The fact that Speed 3 is that little bit lighter also helps. It probably makes it the slightly more accomplished all-rounder for my uses. With well, the Boston, having that slightly better outsole, which obviously adds a little bit of weight, is important. And if you're someone who's frequently running in very, very wet conditions, like even worse than I have in London, then maybe that will be a compelling reason to look at the Boston, the fact it's got that slightly better outsole. Uh, if you have Speed Fatigue, I'll say as well, because the Speed's been around for a long time now, I guess the Speed 4 will come later in the year or maybe Maybe next year. The Boston won't let you down if you want to look at an alternative. It's still a really fantastic shoe that does do a nice variety of runs. I'd say it's also one that's going to be available in sales almost straight away. Like Adidas shoes just tend to end up being you know, available using codes and that kind of thing on their website straight away. So you might end up saving a fair bit by going for it. Although the Speed 3 obviously is an older shoe, so it should be popping up in sales as well. Overall, certainly both very, very good shoes. Uh, I still slightly prefer the Speed 3 might depend on your ride feel and how much you value that outsole and the slight price difference, whether you might prefer the Boston instead. Though. That's a comparison of the Speed 3 and the Adidas Boston 12. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. We're going to have a few more super training comparisons coming up. We're going to try and do a full roundup of them as well once we finish testing a couple of them. But until then, please do like, subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.